In this video, I wanted to see the difference between a top 1% player and the top 0.01% of players, and I think the results aren't what you'd expect. With that being said, remember to like the video and comment down below what other types of videos you'd like to see from me. I do daily uploads here on the channel, so if you guys enjoy content like this, remember to subscribe and turn those notifications on so that you never miss another banger like this one. Alrighty, so we're going to be starting on Clubhouse. We've got Noodle as our top 0.1% player and Lucius Luscious as our top 1% player. Noodle's a comp player. He's been in a few of my other videos. He's insane, completely insane. His aim is is incredible. Uh, his game sense, of course, is really good. He's a multiple time champion player, consistently one of the top champions in the world. Uh, Lucius, he is a several time champion player he's consistently very high diamond i would say that noodle has significantly better aim but lucius has incredible game sense he understands the game fundamentally a lot better than most people do i would say noodle's probably the better overall player considering he is the 0.1 percent player and uh, lucius is the top one percent both of these players are very very good though um not only are we going to be doing a 1v1 to see who's better, a top 0.1% player versus a 1% player, but we're also going to be seeing who wins um, when it comes to like game sense versus aim here, because I'd say Noodle definitely has the aim, but Dino's game sense is very, very good. So we're going to see which one of these players comes out on top between those two factors. Starting off on coastline, of course, Gino is going to be going. I'm going to call him Gino. His name is Gino, but his in game name is Lucius. Um, Gino is going to be starting off on Penthouse as Echo, and Noodle is going straight in through Bathroom Hatch right now as Iana. Just wanted to take this gunfight really, really quickly. We'll see how Gino counters this. Probably going to use his Echo drones to try to stun out Noodle. Noodle is pushing it very quickly, though, so Gino is going to have to be a little bit careful about this. One nade thrown out by Noodle. He's got one left, no gun six, and I believe he's got one drone left. Gino's got good information on him. Ooh, almost a wall bang by him. I told you. <laughs> That's the game sense coming in right there. Trying to use his drones. Gino knows he's planning. He can play the post plant here, honestly. Noodle plants it. Gino still can stun him out and try to take the win, but it's not going to happen. Noodle's going to win out the first round. Nice shot by him. His aim is just crazy, bro. Very well played by him. All right, so second round now. Gino decided to go downstairs into the kitchen bomb site. Noodle's picking up Knock this time instead of the Iana. And he's going to be running the suppressor on the FMG9. I believe that's the suppressor at least. So, yep. <laughs> Gino's going to be playing offsite actually. I actually like this play. Noodle's going to be expecting him to play the site. That's what you would expect him to do. But he's actually going to be offsite. I don't know if Noodle knows this. They're right next to each other now. Gino playing blue bar. Noodle approaching blue bar. I think he knows now. Narrowly missing Gino's head there. Both are still full HP. Now Noodle can take sight. He has bomb. He could easily just go and plant right now. Mm, not sure what that is. I think that nade was for sound. <gasps> Barely missing Gino through the wall. Noodle's now going to take sight. He could throw a soft thing and plant at any point if he'd like to. He's going to try to bait the plant out here. Gino pushing up. Here's roughly where he's at. Knows he's behind the bomb chassis. Just going to wait for him to slip up. Both taking a little bit of damage now. Noodle just playing behind the bomb chassis. Doing a little bit more damage to Gino now. Gino is 1 HP. He has no impacts left to do any sort of damage onto Noodle. Kind of a standstill now. And Noodle's going to win out again. Round 2 going to Noodle. Very nice shots by him. You know, had the play there, I think, but wow. I mean, what do you what do you do against that? I think Gino played that just fine, but what do you do against that? That was just an incredible shot. All right, round three here. Gino's going to decide to go back downstairs to the kitchen bomb site. We can see him using some of the same impacts that he did last round. Just trying to make some rotates. Not sure what he's checking on cams. I guess he's looking for the drone, which he will see. So, Noodle will only have one drone left in the rounds. He's going to go ahead and switch over to Finca. Switching again to Amaro. Not sure what operator he wants to take. Gino trying to make some head holes in kitchen. To try to set the site up a little bit. 
We'll see if this vigil play works out for him once again. And I'm interested to see where Noodle goes in from with this Amaru. All right, so it looks like Noodle's just outside of ruins right now. Try to throw his drone up towards office. Looks like he might actually Amaru in through a security window. That's what it's looking like to me. Yep. Look like he's going to fly straight in through security window right now. Not sure that Gino had heard that. He's on cams right now looking for him. He might be able to see him or hear him with that main lobby cam, which I think he did, which is why he's looking in that direction right now. Gino's in a great spot. If he looks towards bathroom door, he might be able to kill him. Doing a little bit of damage to Noodle now. Rotating back in the kitchen. Noodle's now taking sight and he wins it out again. Complete domination coming out from Noodle. Great shots to him. I think Gino is playing everything properly, but I think the difference in aim and mechanical skill is really showing here. And that's not to take away from Gino as he's an amazing player, but yeah, Noodle is just really winning out those aim duels every time he gets them. All right, so now we're going to be going on to defense. Noodle's going to pick out the Azami. It looks like Gino's going to stick onto that Ash. Noodle's going to go top floor onto the Hookah Bomb site. This is match point now. So. This could be the final round of this game. It all depends if Gino can pull it back here. Then we bring in the Ash. I know he was hit right before the recording. He said he was practicing the R4C. So we'll see if any of that practice comes into fruition here. So far, uh, just to kind of break down the game and give my thoughts on it, on why maybe Gino is losing 0-3 uh, right now. I think mainly it just comes down to the aim duels. Uh, like I said, I do give Noodle the edge here when it comes to mechanical skill. Uh, and, and like I said before, that's not to take away from Gino's skill at all. Um, looks like he's actually going to be picking the G36. So I guess he didn't quite warm up enough with the R4C beforehand. We'll see how he decides to attack the hookah bomb site here. It looks like Gino's going to try to run in through the front door here. Just droning things out, making sure he's clear. You can see these cutoff drones. Very smart by him. He's got two drones in different parts of the map to easily cut off exactly where he wants to push. He had a drone in main lobby. Was able to cut that off and then he also had a drone inside of aqua so he knows that aqua is clear and he's able to walk up white stairs and take that if he'd like to noodle just playing off his azami's great azami placements you know he's going to push in through aqua just as i expected him to as he did have his drone there gonna open up the quad wall now so he's an angle from luggage into um billards and he's gonna see noodle noodle is now stuck in quite the precarious situation he might be able to rotate through the hookah rotate if he really wants to but knowing him he's probably just going to try to take the aim duel here so it's really going to come down to mechanical skill i think gino has one more ash charge so he can destroy these azamis if he'd like to which we're going to see him do right now noodle just being a little bit aggressive going to try to stop him from doing so noodle going to take a little bit of damage for that getting closer to 50 hp gino still full hp he really needs to get rid of these azami traps if he wants to kill noodle here which he's going to do noodle's going to have to push off this now allowing gino to push up Noodle's going to rotate back towards the hookah rotate. Gino knows this and he loses the gunfight narrowly missing Noodle's head there. Well played to Noodle winning out 4-0 on coastline. Yeah, so just to summarize, I really think the difference here is just coming to mechanical skill. It's really hard to pick a top 1% player because that could mean so many different things. But I really do feel like Gino fits the description of a top 1% player. Uh, I feel like both of these players fit the description of what we're trying to do here today. And really, it just came down to Gino narrowly missing some aim duels there. All right, so we're going to be starting in the second map on Oregon now. Gino is going to be on defense once again, and Noodle is going to be starting on attack. Coastline is arguably an attacker-sided map. Uh, it's a very frag-heavy map. It's very aim-dependent. I would say that kind of that map kind of gave the advantage to Noodle. He's put a frowny face in chat. Gino is going to ban out his knock there. I do think this map will be a little bit more competitive as this this map is a little bit more team oriented in my opinion versus coastline um so we'll see if uh, gino could get some rounds this time hopefully not going to go out in a 4-0 fashion that would be unfortunate to happen twice in a row final band coming out right now so far we've got knock jackal valk and the final band will be mira coming out from gino so he is going to be starting on defense. Uh, Gino will be. We're going to see if he could pull out some strats, some you know interesting things to get the advantage over Noodle. He's definitely going to have to think outside of the box here if he'd like to win. I think he should not rely strictly on aim. And it's really interesting to see the difference in like a 1% player versus 0.01% player. You know, you wouldn't think it's that much, but 
it really is i mean it really is and just to clarify i am talking ranked i understand that the pro players would probably be considered in the top 0.1 percent and someone like noodle would maybe be considered in the top one percent but i'm strictly talking about ranked players here so if we're comparing uh a one percent ranked player versus a 0.1 percent ranked player i would say these two players fit that description well, if we wanted to go outside of the box we could get some pro players in here and try to see um a pro player would fare up against someone like noodle i think that'd be a pretty interesting game so if you guys are interested in seeing that make sure you guys subscribe turn notifications on i do do daily uploads on this channel so if you guys are you know enjoying this content you want to see more from me let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me down in the comments and make sure again you are subscribed like the video turn notifications on shows me you guys enjoy these videos and i know what to make going forward with that being said noodle's gonna go six straight into small tower he's gonna be aggressing over from the west side of the map you know is malusi i think that's a great operator for 1v1s definitely gonna be slowing down noodle a little bit and with him losing that gone six as he used it on a barricade oh my goodness they don't even get to finish my sentence noodle hitting a nice little hit fire kill on gino that was a little bit lucky we cannot lie <laughs> nevertheless well played to noodle First round goes to him. Not looking good for Gino as he's down five rounds in a row right now. Uh, Noodle, Noodle saying it was a little bit lucky after Gino commented on his nice shot there. <laughs> Either way. All right, so this round we're going to see Gino hop on the lesion. I like this play about as much as I like the Malusi's play. The only thing I'm worried about is he may not have enough time in the round to deploy... Uh, all eights of lesions mines i believe he has eight mines and they recharge over the course of practically the entire round i don't think the round's gonna get down that far uh in the actual t uh, timer count where he's gonna be able to use all of these mines but he's gonna be able to use enough of them to slow down noodle who is currently clearing from the top floor you see Gino trying to check the cams right now. Just trying to grab some information on where Noodle might be pushing from. Noodle's going to be on the buck, so he can get these hatches fairly easily, as I don't believe Gino went to reinforce any of them. I like this play by Gino. He's going to try to flank right now. Noodle is droning on the top of the main stairs, so he's not. Gino's not going to be able to see him when he flanks this main lobby. He's going to have to be patient and wait for him to come down the main stairs or actually aggress upstairs. I don't know that Gino knows though, and he's looking down the hatch. He may not know that Noodle is just at the top of these stairs. It looks like Noodle does know though. They, Gino is still a little bit lost. They both know where each other are. Now Noodle's going to try to peek the, the floor holes, doing a lot of damage to Gino, and Gino actually wins it out. Incredible shot by him, winning the second round of Oregon. Very well played to him. I liked that flank by him a lot. He seemed a little bit lost. I think he couldn't quite understand where the audio was coming from, uh, from Noodle there. But nevertheless, well played to Gino. And we're on to the third round. All right. So with Gino winning the downstairs bomb site, he's going to head upstairs now. And looks like the reason Gino thought that he was downstairs through the hatch was because the barricade was destroyed on bottom main stairs. So what happened there? And the reason you saw Gino looking down the hatch instead of up the stairs when he heard Noodle was because the barricade was broken. So the Gino, he thought that Noodle had pushed downstairs, which makes sense. So that clears up that little bit of confusion there. Noodle actually getting a nice drone into sight, and I don't think Gino's even able to shoot it. Oh, he saw it. Yep. That's one last drone for Noodle now. Nevertheless, though, Gino's going to head back upstairs. Going to pick that Legion again. I like the Legion pick. It worked out well for him last round. Noodle's going to switch off from the buck that he ran last round and onto the sledge. So we'll see if this fares any better for him compared to the last rounds. Looks like Noodle's going to try to push from the master side over. Gino's getting a little bit aggressive. Hopefully he just plays off those mines. I think if he just plays off these goo mines and just waits for the trap and then swings at that point, I think Gino can win this round fairly easy. We're going to see Noodle drone out just to make sure everything's clear. Uh, Gino has been playing a little bit aggressive. So he wants to make sure every angle is clear. He's going to run straight in and Gino's going to take him out. That is round three going to Gino. Very well played by him. I think the aggression was perfect out of him. Very nice shot. On to round four. I do want to note uh, how I said at the beginning of this map, how this map would be a little bit more competitive as Coastline is a very aim heavy and frag heavy map. There are definitely strats you could pull off. And you know, I'm not sure what the pro players would say. But I do remember that the 
map was attacker sided i'm not sure if that still holds true in the current meta um but for a 1v1 i would definitely in my opinion i would say that coastline is a lot more aim heavy and uh, attacker sided so starting gino off on defense last rounds or last map on coastline definitely put him at sort of a disadvantage putting him on defense this game on oregon definitely gave him a little bit of an advantage over noodle i wouldn't say it's by much but this map is a little bit more strat oriented a little bit more team oriented and with that we are seeing gino come out on the split 2-1 which is about what you'd want to see from uh, a default rank split starting on defense on oregon with that being said noodle's going to be going alibi i actually like the alibi here he's opening up a lot of holes that gino's gonna have to worry about it looks like he actually might try to spawn peek here it's a really tricky spawn peek i died to it all the time you know narrowly dying to it bringing him down to around 50 hp 55 hp you going to take white stairs aggressively here as noodles actually reinforcing if gino could hear that he could push straight in and take sight right now doesn't seem like he knows just yet i don't think he knows that noodles sitting right here on these holes Ooh, gino's about one hp now great angle by noodle he's gonna Try to drone out, see where he's at, take it slow. He does have two minutes. He has bombs, so he could try to plant if he'd like to. He's got two flashes left as well. Noodle is in the advantage here as he does have the timer on his side, forcing Gino to plant. And he's also got the HP here. Unfortunate. Gino flashing himself a little bit there. Noodle just going to play passive inside of Attic. I think he's playing this perfectly. He does not have to push. He has to force the plant here. Great, great angle out of Noodle. Very well played by him. Like I said, I love these holes that he's opening up. And these alibis in a 1v1 are just so deadly. You saw Gino hitting a few of them on multiple occasions. You know, not knowing where your opponent is, you're going to try to shoot through walls. You're going to try to get some lucky shots. And that alibi is going to give you those pings onto that attacker doing so. So well played by Noodle there. He's going to be going downstairs now. And we will see how round five goes for these guys. So we're seeing Noodle pick up the Malusi. Barely missing out Gino's drone there. Gino's going to be on the Twitch this round. He's got a lot more drones to deal with, so he can be a little bit more risky with this drone, as Twitch does have the two shock drones, as well as two regular drones. Or is it one regular drone? One regular drone, I'm pretty sure. My apologies. Nevertheless, he is going to have more drones than a regular attacker, so he's going to be able to use that to his advantage. Unfortunately, I don't believe he's going to be able to destroy any of Noodle's banshees uh i could be wrong on that but i don't believe the twitch drones are able to destroy the banshees anymore nevertheless he is going to have that extra drone to try to get some intel here which we might see him do here in a second noodle is playing pretty aggressive off site we see him just waiting for some drones gonna head back down the site now not really hearing anything you going to drone in through garage down main stairs looks like he might want to take bunker side as that's where he's at and he's going to try to drone from the front side the reason he might do this is if noodle sees a drone come in from front side he might assume that gino's trying to push in through front side when in reality he's actually in the back side so if noodle sees this drone or hears it coming from the front we may actually see him rotate from the back side to the front side here it all depends if he sees the drone but he did not so he's going to assume that he's still back side which gino is Going for another drone here using those multiple drones to his advantage sees that he's close on the door trying to get a wall bang here noodles not quite there gonna fall back to pillar this is gonna be incredibly hard for gino to push considering they've got these head holes he has to watch as well as these banshees he's gonna have to push into You know, trying to be a little bit aggressive, taking pillar side. I'm not sure the noodle knows this. He's going to fall back, though, because he's just not sure where he's at. I think that's the right call here. Minute and 15 seconds left on the board. Remember, Gino does have to plant here. If he if he can't kill noodle, he is going to have to plant. Smoke's going out. Noodle going to impact the wall here just so he's a rotate between the closet if needed. Gino has actually pushed up into the hallway. I don't think Noodle knows this. Noodle's playing very passive. I mean, he's playing this perfectly. He knows that Gino has to plant the bomb, so all he has to do is sit and wait until he hears the bomb go off or until Gino pushes him. 
So Noodle's playing this perfectly so far. Smoke's gonna go out from Gino. He's gonna try to bait out the plant here. Noodle knows that. He's gonna push up. Narrowly missing Gino's head here. Gonna play a little bit passive. Gino's gonna rush up. Missing the shots onto Noodle. And Noodle's gonna win the round. Great shots by him. Gino had an opportunity to win the round, but sadly missed his shots. Noodle, though, not missing his. All right, so it is once again match point for Noodle here. This is the last round that he needs to lock out the game. Now, it is a lot closer than I said it was going to be. Uh, or or that I said it was going to be. Does that make sense? I said it was going to be closer. <laughs> so, we are seeing that from Oregon. The map is a little bit closer, as I expected it to be. Uh, even if Noodle takes this win here and wins out 4-2. Definitely a lot closer than the 4-0 that they had on Coastline. So we are seeing that even the maps can really, uh, you know, dictate who wins here. Um, maybe not who wins, but how close the game is, I should say. Noodle's going to be bringing out that lesion that we saw from Gino. Gino's going to switch off of the Finca and actually resort to picking Lion. Not a bad option at all. Definitely, because if Gino was lying last round when he went to go and plant and he popped off a lion scanner, he would have heard and seen whenever uh, Noodle went to push and he would have known if Noodle was actually pushing up to kill him or if he was just faking it. So I actually really like the lion pick here. Noodle's going for a little bit of a spawn peek. I'm not sure that Gino's aware that the window right next to him is open. Noodle's going to fall down, back down to T1. Here's Gino pushing in. Luckily, he is droning. He's going to see that as well. This is a hard fight to win as the attacker, I will say. Very hard to win. He's going to do a little bit of damage to Noodle, though. Noodle's going to have to fall off because of this. He's going to rotate back down to sight now. Two Legion Mines down. That's actually a considerable amount of his Legion Mines, considering this round's probably not going to last the full few minutes that it has left on it. Gino going to push in. Very, very hard angle for him to win here. I'm a little bit worried for him. The flash bang going out. Noodle's actually going to be full flash. That would have been great if Gino had pushed that. Nevertheless, he has one lion skin left. He's getting active pings on Noodle, so he knows exactly where he's at. Noodle has a goo in his pocket to use to his advantage. Gino does have the HP advantage here. No drones left. No flashes left, but he does have that final scanner left. He could use that to his advantage here if he pops the scanner and tries to plant, which is exactly what he's going to do here. Exactly what I called in the prep phase is what he's doing. Noodle's forced to stand still. Gino's probably going to get that plan off because of this. Minute 30 left. 45 seconds left on the diffuser. Gino now has to retake. Narrowly missing. Gino's head there. Oh, and an amazing shot by Noodle. I wish I could see that from his perspective. That was absolutely crazy. All right, so that is going to be map two going to Noodle. Great, great shot by him at the end. That is crazy. Well played to him. We'll see if these guys want to do a map three. All right, so for our final map here, we're going to be going on to Clubhouse. Once again, Gino is on defense. Noodle is on attack. We're going to see what they're going to ban here. Last map was definitely a lot closer uh, comparing from that map to Coastline. So that's about what I expected was going to happen coming from that map. Gino's going to go ahead and ban Noodle's knock. Does not want to play against that. Um, I wouldn't either. <laughs> it knocks kind of annoying in a 1v1. All right, so I'm actually really excited about this map because this is another one of those that is a little bit more strat heavy. Clubhouse definitely um, strat heavy, team heavy. Now, both of these guys do not have any teammates, but it is going to be a little bit more strat heavy, as I said. So uh, less about strictly aim duels like we saw in Clubhouse. I think even less so about aim duels than on Oregon. So we'll see how that fares for both of these guys now. Hopefully Gino could pick up map three. It would be nice to see. Noodle going to switch off that Habana and actually pick up Thermite. Gino going to be on the smoke, reinforcing off rafters, which you don't see too often. But in this situation, it's definitely understandable. Probably why Noodle's going to switch on to that Thermite. That way he's actually able to open up multiple walls. And of course, he saw that Gino's on smoke. So there's no wall denial coming out so he's going to be able to easily open up both the plat wall as well as rafters wall if he so chooses to do which we see him running towards right now noodle does have two smoke grenades so he could actually open up this wall and then smoke off the top red door and just walk straight into sight at that point it would be up to gino to properly use his smokes and deny that plant thermite's going off 
Wow, Noodle's actually running a shotgun. I don't know if Gino knows that. Oh my God, he's gonna win the OG shotgun strat. Noodle bringing us back to year one, season one with Thermite shotgun. Absolutely love to see that. Dripped out with the black ice and everything. Nice shots by him. Gino cannot believe his eyes in the chat. You have to respect it. You absolutely have got to respect the Thermite shotgun. Not many players can pull off their my shotgun, but Noodle can. All right, so this round, Gino's saying, forget it with smoke. Let me have Ella. I actually do like this pick. I know I've been saying that about every operator, but these guys truly are bringing out some very smart picks here. The Ella mines are definitely going to help slow Noodle down. He's not going to be able to just rush the site like he did last round. So that will definitely help Gino out considerably. He's also got that shield as well. Uh, which I know he had last round of smoke, but he's going to be able to keep that. So he's not losing too much utility by bringing Ella. I think Ella is so busted, honestly, just because there's no real way to counter her. You know, she's going to throw all her traps down basically right at the start of the game. And there's nothing you can really do to stop her from doing that. So definitely a really strong operator. Noodle going to be switching off the hard breacher onto Buck. Looks like he might try to push garage this round. I'm not sure what he's planning to do. He does have a hard breach gadget. So just because he's not thermite anymore does not mean he cannot get these walls. So we see him repelling up. He's likely going to try to hard breach gadget the wall here. He might get both sides. I don't know. I'm not sure if he's going to try to get both or go to garage. Yeah, it looks like he might try to go to garage here. So he's already got his drone in garage, knows that it's clear. He's going to go straight in through that garage door. Just making sure Gino's not going to peek the hole he just opened up. Now, Gino does have a Elamine on the window, but I don't think he has an Elamine ready for the garage wall. Noodle's going to shoot one of the Elamines down, so he only has two left now. Here he goes, trying to open up the garage wall. Interesting that he chooses to open up the left side. I personally would have opened the right side. Oh, very good. Very good positioning by Gino here. This is a, a hard push by Noodle. I'm not going to lie. Having to vault that, that rotate hole is not nice. The Elamine, an easy kill by Gino. Well played to him. I told you those Elamines are going to come in clutch. You saw Noodle hop in. He got Elamines. He's like, you know what? This is not worth me pushing. I'm going to try to hop out. Unfortunately for him. Gino was there to swing, get an easy kill onto him. Those Elamines proving to be quite a big help for Gino. All right, round number three. Gino's going to head downstairs as Legion. And so far, Noodle's going to pick Iana. We'll see if he switches off of that. I feel like he might. Um, it depends. I'm not sure what his plan is. Looks like he's putting a, a drone up in oil pit. So he may choose to push blue. Um, we may see him switch to something like Habana. Um, well, actually, I guess maybe not because... It's unlikely Gino will get hatches. So honestly, Noodle can play whatever he wants here. He's not going to have to worry about opening too many things as Gino's not going to have enough time to run around and reinforce everything that he needs to do here. So he's going to go ahead and stick that Iana. Smart choice by him. We see Gino checking cams at the start of the round. This is something that people need to do in general a lot more. A lot of people don't check cams right at the start of the round. A lot of people think that checking cams is something you do after you die, but... Uh, we see Gino checking cams here right as soon as the round starts. And that's really smart because you get, a, you get to see what kind of operators the team is running as well as where they're pushing from. With that being said, though, Noodle's going to rush site and Gino's going to punish him for that. Great shot by him. Wow. Definitely a lot closer here. Love to see it. Maybe this will be Gino's map. We can only hope. So once again, Gino's going to be taking that 2-1 lead that we saw him take as well on Oregon last game. When he went over to attack, he did struggle a little bit more, which is expected. Oregon and Clubhouse, uh, a little bit defense-sided in the 1v1s. Um, we're going to have him go on to Ace, and we're going to see Noodle pick up that Mute. So let's see if Gino decides to switch off of the Hard Breacher. I think the Mute is a really smart pick, considering that... It's very likely Gina will actually pick a hard breacher, uh, especially when the site is top floor. It's so much easier to attack the top floor site when you actually have all of these walls opened up. So we'll see if Gino's going to switch off of that. He did see that Noodle is mute. Now, Gino's not really going to be able to open up anything with this mute. So it would be a smart decision for him to switch off. He may be able to get the tops of the walls, but he's not going to be able to do much else with it. He may go downstairs and try to shoot the jammers off to the floor. We'll see. 
interesting choice here by noodle to actually open up the rafters personally i would have um reinforced it off like gino did and muted it but we'll see how this works for him it looks like he's gonna try to play rafters that wall is muted so noodle doesn't have to worry about it too much looks like he might actually try to go for a run out here gino might not be ready for it he hears the mute chambers on the wall gonna try to throw them high this actually will get just the tops of the wall so gino will have like a nice little angle into rafters but noodle's gonna fall off of that probably gonna run up red stairs here and try to retake the site from there now unless gino can somehow get these jammers off the wall he's not gonna be able to open up that wall to where he can walk into it so noodle is still in a great spot here you see him trying to get a little bit lucky with the floor banks not quite working out for him Ooh, he, he's actually taking a little bit of damage from noodle he's just shotgunning through the floor here the so noodle knows he's going to try to play vertical and try to get these jammers off the floor so he's going to make some of his own holes preemptively try to defend that uh that jammer from being shot off but gina's actually going to decide just to rotate over to con side now the wall is actually soft that's a big problem for gino believe it or not because if he throws an ace charge on this wall it's very likely noodle will probably just shoot it off or maybe he will choose not to interesting so gino's gonna be able to get that wall up and now gonna try to drone and get some information noodles in a pretty good spot he also has a c4 here so he is gonna be able to c4 if needed Ooh, narrowly missing the wall bang here gino's gonna take sight noodles gonna try to shotgun some holes in just to try to get a better line of sight you know does have bomb he could try to plant the drone hole could be crazy not quite gonna work out for him Noodle just playing the server act just waiting he knows he's got the time and he's gonna win the round very nice shots for him well played all right so we see noodle going kate here which is actually interesting so it looks like he's gonna try to reinforce the hatches looks like that might be his top priority here uh gino is running the buck so he may be able to actually open up dirt i don't think noodle's gonna have enough time to reinforce all the hatches in the site walls very interesting kate coming out from noodle i actually really like that I'm not sure I've seen that one before. I've seen the one that you put in the sink in the in kitchen to get the hatch. I'm not sure that I've ever seen that one. So pretty clever spot by him. I'm not sure how common that actually is. Maybe I'm just out of the loop here. Uh, we'll see if uh, Gino sees that one is able to shoot it off. With that one being upstairs, if Gino is aware of that spot, he's going to be able to easily shoot it off. And if he's got these hard breach gadgets, which he doesn't, he would be able to open the hatch. So it looks like... Noodle going Cade, not going to matter too much as Gino has no hard breach capabilities to begin with. Not to mention, he's going to be pushing blue. Great drone spot G by Gino, I have to say. That's a really nice drone spot. Noodle going to shoot one of Gino's two drones. Flashbang's coming out. Only got two left now. One more being thrown out. He needs to push off this utility if he's going to try to do so, which he is. Noodle's going to fall back. Close onto the blue door. Going to swing in. Easy kill by him. Gino not clearing his corners properly. That's going to put us on a match point for Noodle. We could see this map go the same way we saw it go in Oregon. It's all going to depend on this round. All right. So Noodle is actually deciding to go bar. Very interesting choice coming out from Noodle here. He's going to be going that Aruni. And we're going to see Gino on the line. At least for now. We'll see if he decides to uh, six pick off of that. But now though, sticking the, the lion. Rooney's a great operator for 1v1s as well. You guys know whenever I do the 1v1 videos and I'm actually playing, you guys know I always preach the, the Rooney, the Malusi, Legion, operators like that. They just are so powerful in a 1v1 like this. You know his first drone going to get shot out, so he's only got one left. That's not much information that he has to work with. Noodle's still having two of these gates in his pocket. Interesting choice. Yeah, very interesting placements by him. So Gino's going to decide to push in through garage here. Going in loud too. Guns blaring. Noodle's going to hear that. Going to try to play off of it accordingly. Very, very interesting gate placements by Noodle. Not sure that I would use these same ones, but... First line scan going out. Not going to get anything with that. Just keeping Noodle in place so far. Two minutes, 20 seconds left. Plenty of time for Gino to try to work an attack here. He's gonna try to join in bar that's his last drone gone so he doesn't have much info to work off of anymore he really needs to save his flashes for these aruni gates as well noodle gonna hold his ground here not gonna move when he got droned 
Ooh, doing a lot of damage to Gino, who's about 50 HP now. Gino doing a lot of damage onto Noodle now. Gonna push off this. He does have a high Mac. He can just keep pushing in. Noodle does have the HP advantage here, though. Lion Scan going out, and Noodle's gonna win it in 4 2 fashion. The two competitive maps, the two team slash strat oriented maps, were definitely a lot closer than the aim map uh, of Coastline. But nevertheless, Noodle was able to pull it out. So GG's to him. Well played to both of these guys. Make sure you guys follow them. I'll have their Twitters linked down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss any of my daily uploads. And see you guys later.